Okay, we're back, and we see a lot of people joining us on the chat room. It is great to have all of you here. Uh, I see Justin and Lawrence and uh, Mission Man, Renee and Romans 838, Tim and Val. Great to have all of you here. I want to go to, uh, we're going to go back to Lynn, uh, our good friend Lynn in Quebec, who's an amazing individual, a scholar and a lady. Lynn, you've got the next question. Go ahead. The next question is actually from Rod's blog, and it's from Chuck. It was posted a little while ago, and I think it's um, so it's pertinent to ask it. If someone is hurting, someone is sick and dying, and we pray for them, nothing happens. Is it us, or is it the sick person lack of faith, or is it just God did not want to heal them? And also within this question, he also says, um, do you think the faith of the people in the Bible was the faith we have today? So this question has a to do about faith you know unfortunately uh, there has been much discussion on the, the conditions required and the words of Jesus Christ have been taken out of context frequently when dealing with faith probably one of the greatest scenes in the Bible to me is when Jesus asked the man who's being healed do you have faith to be healed uh, do you believe and the man says I believe, Lord, forgive my unbelief. <laughs> and God is amazed. And he heals them. Now, this, this is an indication of what God is really getting at. What the Lord is really getting at is identifying the helplessness that is required to truly depend on God's supernatural abilities. Now, I wish I could say that there was one formula that fits all. Oh, I know people in the, in the faith movement and people around the world have said, that, you know, if you just buy my DVD, if you just listen to my sermon, if you just do this three steps here, that God will give you the house of your dreams and you'll he'll never be sick. And I know what we've heard enough of that, okay? We've all heard that. The truth is that every person is different and the truth is that God deals with every person differently because you're a different person. And God doesn't come down with a blanket policy like some kind of gigantic insurance program. Why? Because he wants to speak with you. He wants to have fellowship with you. The whole Bible is written to have fellowship with you. Now, I'm going to let the ladies answer in a moment. Uh, but in Hebrews chapter 11, we often think that this is the definition of faith. It is not. It's the description of faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, that's an oxymoron. The substance is something you can touch, taste, feel, and see. It's right in front of you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. But you hope for something you don't have. Faith is the substance of things you hope for. And then Paul, the writer of Hebrews, I believe is the writer of Hebrews, says, it is the evidence of things not seen. Well, evidence is something you see. You bring evidence to court. If you don't have any evidence, you don't have a case. And so Paul sets up this enigma trying to describe faith. What he's saying is this is the description of faith. Now let's, t let's think about this for a moment. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. We have faith that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, so we have faith we will live forever. We are not uh, in heaven right now, yet anyone would say you believe that heaven is yours if you have faith in Jesus Christ. It is not a comment on whether God wants to heal you or not. He, God wants to heal everybody. But, you know, I, I, I'll give this one example. And this is just one, maybe not yours. It's like the boy who asked the girl out. I told this story this morning in the mm -hmm. second service. Mm -hmm. A guy asked a girl out. She said no. He said, well, I guess it must be my hair. And so he goes back and does his hair, gets it all cut. He comes back. He asks her out again. The girl says no. He said, well, it must be my teeth. So he goes and gets his teeth fixed and gets himself where he should be. And he comes back, asks her out again. She says, no. He says, well, it must be my beard. So he goes and shaves his beard off and cleans his face up, gets himself. She, he goes back again. Can I go out with you? She says, no. Uh, he says, it must be my clothes. So he goes back and he changes his clothes. And he looks all nice. He goes back, would you go out with me? She says, you're not ready yet. And so then he goes back. He says, I guess I, I better start wearing deodorant. And get my, so he, he goes back and, and he allows the authority the desire of her favor, the, the authority of her favor, he allows to change him. This is one example of what sometimes prayer is like. 
Sometimes God is changing us as we pray, as we keep going back to Him, keep going back to Him, keep going back to Him. He is reshaping us, He is reforming us, and rebuilding us. This is what He did with Israel. And by the way, this principle is in the principle of the Mosaic Law with the sacrifices of the fellowship offering and the sacrifices of all the offerings. It's this constant returning to God until we get our minds to the place where we understand what the sacrifices actually are. So I am not one to tell you that you don't have enough faith because Jesus said if you had faith as a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. I'm not going to be the person in your life that says you don't have enough faith. I'm not going to be the person in your life that says you have to buy my CD or cassette to do it. I am, however, going to be the person in your life to say, no, God is not willing that any perish, and God doesn't want uh, people to be sick and, and destroyed. But God does want people to be healed in spirit and healed in eternity. That's a priority. And we start there, and we're healed from the inside out. Janice? You know, I think it's a difficult thing to articulate, at least I have problem sometime articulating what's in my heart and knowing how to to convey um, what I have learned about my Heavenly Father and and I think that from my own personal experience the more that I get to know God the more my faith can grow not because I'm a better person but because I have seen God's faithfulness in my life and in the lives of of my family and my friends who also serve the Lord. And so I see his faithfulness in, in, in the lives of, of those who have given themselves to him. And that gives me more faith when I confront situations in my life. And I think it's difficult as human beings living in this sin-cursed world where there is sickness, there is disease, there is poverty. There are questions that we can't answer because we only see here. We don't see the future. We don't understand God's thoughts or God's actions because we're at this time. And so for us to pray for somebody and, and they're dying and then they die, we somehow feel that we didn't have enough faith to keep them alive or that maybe they did something wrong and they're being punished and taken away. And yet, if you really understand the nature of God, He is Redeemer. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He has given His only Son as a sacrifice so that we can live with Him forever. Forever. So our faith is in that, is in that hope that God knows the future that he takes care of us in the details that we can't even comprehend. Sometimes we don't feel like he's there. Satan would like us to believe that, but that's a lie. God is with us all the time. And when we are obedient to him, when we have fellowship with him, he'll take care of us. And when things happen that we don't understand, our faith is in God's faithfulness. We say, Lord, it's like this man. We say, Father, I believe you, but please help my unbelief. Right now, I'm in agony. I'm in pain. I don't understand what's going on, but here's what I understand, Father. You love me. You love your creation. You have made a way for us. Thank you, God. Thank you, and help me. Help me to persevere. Give me the fruits of the Spirit. Help that to grow in me. And that's, that's now we've got happened. we've only got a few seconds left, so we're going to come back. Corey has something, but also the thing to remember is mm -hmm. what the man asked. You're absolutely right, Janice, from the heart, ladies and gentlemen. My wife and she knows what she's talking about. But the man said, "Lord, I believe." Now look what he said. He didn't say, "But give me more belief." He said, "Forgive." So he right, knew right. that Jesus Christ had the power to forgive yes. his problems and to forgive his weaknesses and that made him more faithful because he knew Jesus had the ability to forgive him and that is what Jesus responded to so keep that in mind it's all about knowing Jesus Hosea chapter 6 verse 3 no God no God no God we'll be back stay there more to come <laughs>